Incoming transmission from... Science Officer Mark. By my calculations, there is a storm of space debris heading our way. If we do not get out of the way soon, it will make impact in the next 20 minutes. How can you be so calm about that? We're all going to die! Now is not the time to let your emotions take control of you. But you said it yourself, impact in 20 minutes. And we don't know which way to turn because we're in a dark void. That's right. You should be scared. Darkness all around you. Space rocks heading for you. First they'll destroy your shields, and then they will destroy your ship, and you will be sucked out into the cold void, and you'll freeze. You better freak out. Why can't I mute you, evil me? That's not right. Science Officer Mark is correct. Don't be anxious. We have 20 minutes. All we have to do is figure out the next name of God, and the coordinates will take us to safety. Jehovah Shalom, meaning Lord, God of peace. Oftentimes our hearts are anxious. When Adam sinned, he brought misery to the whole world and to the human heart, and also brought death, and with death comes fear. Yes, exactly. I'm scared I'm going to die by getting sucked out into space. Please calm down. When Jesus was preaching and teaching, there was a time when everyone around him was scared, and he was calm. As you know, many of Jesus' disciples were fishermen, so he spent a lot of time with them on the boat. Their boat sailed the Sea of Galilee. One day, a storm appeared suddenly while the disciples were out fishing, and they were tossed forward and backward and sideways and up and down. I think I'm getting sick just thinking about it. I'm sure they must have been seasick, but they were more frightened than they were sick. As the storm got stronger and stronger, the wind caused the waves to get bigger and bigger, and the water started to spill into the boat. Now, if the water filled the boat, the boat wouldn't be able to float anymore. It would sink down, down, down to the bottom of the ocean. Much like the space rocks tearing through our ship. That's exactly right. And they were probably all screaming. Ah! Well, everyone except Jesus. They went to get Jesus and they found him asleep on a cushion in the stern of the boat. Now, you can imagine how they felt about that. They didn't understand why Jesus was asleep. So they woke him up. In Mark 4.38 is recorded that they said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Don't you care that we're drowning? Don't you care that we're going to die? Why are you freaking out? That's the real question our hearts have when we face scary things. Does God care? Does he even see? Well, we know that God is El Roy. He is the God who sees. But does he care? Sometimes I think we think he has more important things to worry about than us that like some big important bigwig, that he has bigger things to deal with than our problems. But the Bible tells us otherwise. Remember, the Bible tells us what is true, even when our emotions, our fear, tells us something else. Peter, one of the men who was in the boat that day, wrote these words in 1 Peter 2, 6 through 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. What does that mean? It means that yes, God is big and we have to humble ourselves before him, but he also cares for us. He wants us to pray to him and trust him and hand our fears over to him. He cares for us. But wait, how does the story end? You can't just stop telling a story where they are in the middle of a storm. Oh yes, I forgot. They, they wake up Jesus and they say, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus wakes up, and they're probably expecting him to be upset too, or start trying to bail water out of the boat. But he doesn't do either of those things. He doesn't even speak to them at first. He speaks to the wind and the waves first. And it says he rebuked the wind and the waves. That means that he put them in their place, told them what they should and shouldn't do. He says, peace, be still. Now, if it were you, and me, and we try to tell the wind to stop blowing and the waves to stop crashing, what do you think would happen? Nothing. Because we are humans, but Jesus is fully human and he is fully God. So 
when he tells the wind and the waves to knock it off. They must obey him. And guess what happened? They obeyed him. The wind stopped and the waves stopped. And Jesus brought peace to the storm because he is the Lord of peace. But that wasn't the only rebuke he gave. And that wasn't the only peace he brought that day. After he spoke to the wind and the waves, he spoke to the hearts of the disciples. He said, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? It's like he said to their hearts, peace, be still. They didn't need to fear because God in flesh was with them. Now it goes on to say that they did fear, but this kind of fear was a different fear. It says, and they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This wasn't a, a shake in my space boots fear. This was an awe and wonder and respect kind of fear. It was the kind of respect you show someone with great power. And Jesus showed he had great power. And they asked, who is this? We know the answer, that Jesus is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. He gives us internal peace. He gives us peace in our worried hearts. What you've said is logical. In Isaiah 26, 3, it is written, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. That's it. That must be today's power verse. All ships, take evasive action. Turn to I, two, six, three, and fire your thrusters. By my calculations, we have avoided the space storm. Hallelujah! I was worried I was going to be a spacicle for a moment there. Congratulations, Cosmos Command Fleet! The peace of God has kept your hearts calm and you have been able to avoid the storm. But there is more to God's peace than what you've discovered. That will help you discover the next coordinates. Crew members, I will start studying that now as you talk more about the Lord of Peace.